Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. Now, as you can see, I am not in the attic of dreams. We have started the year by heading down to Bavaria. Um, as you all know, if you've watched the show, I've been taking a break because we just had the most recent member of our family arrive. He is uh, perfectly happy, perfectly healthy. We're all doing very well. Uh, we've just come down here to see some family. However, I still wanted to get a show out um, uh, as the new year has begun and there is lots to talk about. So uh, without any further ado, let's get on with it. Now, up first this week, we have an artificial intelligence project that uses the Raspberry Pi. Not only that, it uses a color e-ink display, which is another technology that I am totally into. And it is a kind of machine learning project that I am really interested in. It is the intersection of art and artificial intelligence. So this project combines a lot of things I find quite interesting. Uh, the first being neural style transfer. That is the form of machine learning that allows you to take two images and combine them into one. That's what you're seeing just here. This is a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator movies, combined with lots of other things that I think the uh, author said he found on the free image website Pexels. Um, for a, another example of it, uh, this uses uh, neural transfer using PyTorch. Pi Pi um, and uh, as you can see here, this uh, these images in the... Um, uh, tutorial screen that we have here show you combining a turtle with another image to make a quite trippy looking combined image. I'm sure you're familiar with that. This uses it also with uh, an e-ink display, a color e-ink display, another thing I am super interested in. This is a Pimeroni hat, um, specifically the Pimeroni 7 color inky hat. And uh, this is a perfect example to give a quick plug to the shop, by the way. Um, as I mentioned in most shows, we have an Electromaker store, um, and we do stock the Inky Impression. It is a seven color hat that works with all 40 pin header Raspberry Pis. So that's Raspberry Pi 3, 4, Raspberry Pi 0. Um, in fact, if I scroll down here, you will see it with a Raspberry Pi 0 attached onto the back. In fact, if you got one of the new Raspberry Pi Zeros, as I did, I can think of no better use for it than seeing if it would work with one of these, something I might have to fiddle around with and write a tutorial for in the future. Anyway, back to the project. 314 Reactor used PyTorch to create this neural style transfer and stick it on the Raspberry Pi. Now you can see here this, uh, what looks, uh, when I first saw this, I thought this was uh, uh, water and uh, uh, soap in a dish. It's actually just a marble effect dish that he's using as the case. The Raspberry Pi sits inside it with the screen on top of it. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's some images of the build process here. And here is the finished build. Um, but as well as that, of course, there is a bunch of information about how to get this going. Um, it is worth noting that this uses a legacy version of the Raspberry Pi OS. This uses the Buster, I believe. Uh, yeah, Debian Buster 32-bit um, Raspberry Pi OS. But you can get that through the Raspberry Pi launcher. Um, and yeah, it's just a very full tutorial telling you how you can create your own uh, neural network generated art using Raspberry Pi and an e-ink display. It's all done on the Raspberry Pi, requires no internet connection. You can download it and compile it yourself. And all of the code is, of course, up on 314 Reactor's GitHub page. Um, and yes, here are some examples of it in action. Again, Terminator theme. Here's a picture of the Terminator, albeit without the skin, um, and uh, with various other images uh, uh, put over the top of it. And as I said at the start of this section, I just think it's such a compelling way of creating art. It's one of the easier ways, I think, for people to get into it. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just a lovely project all around. Up next, we have another intersection of technology and art. Now, I found this on the Weevolver subreddit, although it's actually by an art collective called Breakfast. Um, and this is a flip dot display work of art, which is a, an atlas of the world um, that sends ripples out based on what is being said on Twitter about sustainability. So, as I mentioned, I saw this originally on the Weevolver subreddit, but they aren't the original posters of it. It's actually from a group called Breakfast, who I've never heard of before, um, but they have a slightly higher quality version of it here. So before going any further, it's quite short, so let's just watch it together.
So I urge you to go and watch this video yourself in full screen. They have a super high quality version of it, which is definitely worth watching. And But essentially what you're seeing here is every single one of these little ripples is when someone on Twitter or on social media uses the hashtag sustainable to talk about sustainability. Um, and the bigger the uh, influence, the bigger the ripple, as in the number of followers they have. Although what you can also see is there is a depth sensing camera just here, um, which will also reflect whoever is coming up to the image itself. Um, this is a flip dot display, as you may have realized. These are, are all tiny little um, bits of, they look a bit like uh, sequins almost, you know? Uh, like those t-shirts that uh, uh, you see, if people can flip them all up for them to be one color and flip them all down for it to be another color. It's very similar to that, although of course it is done mechanically. And I think the one thing about this that makes it um, especially interesting is just the level of detail that has gone into making it really look like these are ripples. If you watch um, as it ripples out, they shimmer ever so slightly. It's a really lovely, yeah, you can see it on the edge here. It's a really lovely little effect and something that they must have spent a lot of time tweaking and getting right. Um, it seems like Breakfast are an art collective that I should probably know about, given the kind of work that they are already doing. Um, and I did notice in the end cards of this particular video, there is a documentary about them. So it's something that I certainly will be watching later. So it's a bit of a two for one in case you are interested in the people behind this particular project. But as always, I will leave a link to uh, this YouTube video in the description of our video. Just before we go on, a little quick housekeeping. If you are watching the Electromaker show and you are not subscribed to the Electromaker YouTube channel, it would mean a lot to us if you took the time to do so. Um, if you click subscribe on the main page, um, you will be subscribed to us. That means we will show up in your subscription panel here. But other than that, it won't really change the way you use YouTube all that much. Another thing that you can do is click this little bell notification icon here. Now, um, as it stands, when it says personalized, if I'm being honest, I have no idea what that means. It's never really made a difference to my experience of YouTube, but clicking all is something I do on the channels that I want to stay up to date with. Because this means that uh, uh, when a new video is posted on this channel, um, you will get a notification up here in the top corner when you go to YouTube. Um, so it will show up in this notifications menu. Please note that unless you have desktop notifications set up for your browser for YouTube, this will not set up a notification that will just show up at your computer at any random time you are using it. You will have to be um, at the YouTube website to see these notifications and they don't show as pop-ups. You just get a little number next to the notification tab. So when you go there, you can click on it and it will show up in this menu. It is not quite as uh, intrusive as some other notifications can be. One other thing you can do that will help us too is uh, to like this video. I know it's something people ask to do a lot, but um, if you click the like button underneath, um, it's basically a very simple way of letting YouTube know that you like this um, and it will look at the things that you like and maybe recommend it to other people who like to hear about Maker and Embedded News. Um, uh, so those are the three things that you can do on YouTube that will really make a large difference to us. Um, if you are uh, going to do that, thank you so much. Um, if you're not really a YouTube person and you prefer to support us in a more concrete way, there is a way that you can also do that. And that is because Electromaker has a store. Um, as you can see from the names scrolling across the top of the screen, we have a nice mixture of things that are much more maker and beginner based, right through to things that are a little bit more uh, hard edged and industry. Um, and uh, we don't have a Patreon, we don't rely on donations. Um, uh, the best way you can support us is by just thinking of us when you think of your next project. Um, uh, if there's a bunch of stuff that you need for a project, you will probably be able to find it on Electromaker. Um, and uh, yeah, it's by far the best way you can support the show. Well, we are here. If you're working on projects, um, uh, even if they're just projects in theory or you're just basically learning something for the first time, if you document it, you can upload it to the Electromaker website. Um, and in fact, I always check the Electromaker website for uh, ideas for things to feature on the show. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to actually have shows in the future which dive really deep into purely Electromaker projects. There's never been a better time to start getting involved. Um, the community side of Electromaker will be growing a lot more in the coming months. Um, and also, as you can see under this tab, we do have a Discord server. Um, that Discord server is a place where you can show off your projects as well. You can also talk about um, different things, whether they're part of Electromaker or just what you're working on and get advice. Um, and there's an, a, a, just a general hangout section in there too, um, which I tried to spend a little bit of time in in my time off when I was uh, uh, looking after the childs, but uh, the childs took a lot of looking after, so I only posted a few things in there. However, the Discord server is growing day by day, um, and I would love it if that was a place where people just generally hung out and chat a lot more. It's something that I I plan to do as well. Anyhow, thank you for your patience during this piece of housekeeping. If you choose to do any one of those things, it will make me very happy. But as always, the show is here for you to enjoy. So let's get on with it. Moving over to the part of the show we call Funding Website Things, in which we look at things on funding websites. Uh, this week, we have two things from CrowdSupply, both of which are very, very interesting in their own separate ways. So we find ourselves, as we so often do, on CrowdSupply. Now, this is a pre-launch page for Hamster Mix. 
Now it's probably not a surprise to any of you why I've chosen to cover this because this is where microcontrollers and music meet. You know that's where I love to be. In this case, this is for a MIDI controller. This is something that does not create music by itself. It is for controlling MIDI instruments or controlling a laptop via MIDI, which has MIDI instruments on it, like a program like Ableton Live. And the first thing you'll notice about it, if you realize that these switches are your normal tiny little switches that you get in most Arduino starter kits, um, that this is a very small board indeed. It has two potentiometers on it. It has enough buttons for one octave. So that is a C, C sharp digit, as you can see, it goes up all 12 notes um, and a couple of different buttons for switching between banks and stuff like that. In fact, if I scroll down and uh, we play this video here, um, you will see it in action. Um, now, the video does have sound, um, but as I say, this is a MIDI controller, so the sound you will be hearing is just what they have set up in Ableton Live. This can be used to control anything. If you have uh, some lovely old vintage synths from the 1980s, MIDI was a thing then too, um, and you'll be able to plug uh, a MIDI to US, uh, sorry, a MIDI to Bluetooth adapter into any of those, they're very cheap to get, and use this thing just as you would with that as anything else. Or of course, you can, as you can see here, use it with something like Ableton Live or any digital audio workstation of your choice. So Hamster Mix is coming soon. It's definitely something we'll be coming back to when it launches. If you are interested, you can sign up on the page here to actually get emails uh, from the team at Hamster Mix when it goes live on Crowd Supply. Um, but of course, as I mentioned, we definitely will come back to this one on the show. Um, yeah, a very nicely fully featured little ESP32 powered MIDI device. What more is there to love? Staying on Crowd Supply, we're moving over to the Icebreaker Bitsy. Now, this is a follow-on to the wildly successful Icebreaker FPGA development board. Um, it's something that we covered, uh, I think, on the show a long time ago. If not, it's certainly something that I remember reading about. Um, and that was a, a fully uh, a fully realized development kit for FPGAs aimed at pretty much everybody. Now, of course, anyone who has tried to get into FPGA, FPGA programming will know that, um, yeah, it's it's... A level above a lot of other stuff. If you started like I did with just teaching yourself Arduino coding, um, there's a few steps of computer engineering above uh, my general knowledge base. I have doubled into it in the time off that I have. I've started uh, doing a little bit of passive learning, just reading and watching a lot of FPGA tutorials, um, but it's still above my head. Um, but the Bitsy version of this FPGA is a, a smaller form factor version of the original icebreaker, and it is PMOD compatible. So if you have any of those nice uh, Digilent PMOD uh, uh, extenders, their own version of, say, the Arduino Shield, you could call it, uh, I suppose, um, they will work out of the box with them. And indeed, the icebreaker team have even come up with some of their own. Um, and as you can see, you can put pins on this and stick it on a breadboard. It is also castellated, so you can put it straight on a PCB. Um, there is a lot more to say about this, but I will not say it. Um, we will come back to this one when it launches to see how much it costs, and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more then. But needless to say, it is, uh, uh, as you can see, Ice Studio um, uh, compatible, um, and the Icebreaker team really do seem to uh, make support a very important part of all of the things that they do and make. So if you are interested in getting into FPGAs, um, the Icebreaker yeah, is a really good place to start, and the Icebreaker Bitsy might be exactly what you're looking for, because at the end of the day, who doesn't want an incredibly powerful, fully realized, uh, CPU that they've created on a tiny form factor board. Since this is the first Electromaker show of 2022, I thought I'd put on a contest rather than the regular mystery box prize. And uh, this week we are giving away an Arduino Uno Mini. And by the way, I'm absolutely aware this is not the right hat. Uh, it is very, very cold down here in Bavaria. <laughs> Now, if you aren't aware, the Arduino Uno Mini is a miniaturized version of the original Arduino Uno. Uh, the Arduino Uno got its name around about the time the first official Arduino IDE was released, around about 10, 11 years ago. Um, and this is a special limited edition celebration of time, essentially, of how far the Arduino project has come. They are a limited edition. Each one um, has a number on it on the box. Um, and as soon as they came out, uh, they came out in the time that I was taking off during my paternity leave, I saw it and I thought, that's something that A, I, I want one of those, and B, we have to give one away on the show. So um, you're hopefully seeing it on the screen right now. It's a very cute little miniature thing with gold aesthetics. And essentially it does just what an Arduino Uno does, but with a USB type C connector. It's a lovely thing to have. Um, and of course it is miniaturized, it's castellated. You could put it into um, a project if you wanted to, but this is more the kind of thing that I feel like it's a, just a nice piece of Arduino history because who knows where they're gonna be in 10 years time. It's uh, been an incredible ride. And let us not forget for all of the Arduino clones out there, the original Arduino project was uh, fundamental in kicking off the maker movement with microcontrollers. Yes, there have been other people that were doing it at the same time, but uh, yeah, Arduino was probably one of the first really big names in this, um, and uh, yeah, it's nice to celebrate with them. 
So, as always, this competition is a little bit different to the Mystery Box Prize. We won't be picking the prize winner at random. To enter this competition, you need to be a subscriber to the Electromaker YouTube channel. You also need to head down to the comment section of this video and leave a comment saying what Arduino means to you. Uh, and also leave a hashtag on that comment that just says Uno Mini. U-N-O-M-I-N-I, -I, no spaces. Um, and uh, that's that's it. Uh, now, this competition will be drawn in two weeks um, because uh, as you can see this week, I'm not in Berlin. Next week, I will be back in Berlin. However, I will probably be uh, taking a little bit of time just to give the studio a spruce up as um, most of the studio was turned into storage during the last couple of months of madness and new family members and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this competition will most likely be drawn in two weeks. So if you're watching this and um, before the next Electromaker show is out, you can still enter by uh, heading to the comment section on this video. Um, but yes, I'm very interested to hear what Arduino means to you. It means quite a lot to me because uh, getting my first Arduino Uno signified the first time in my life I really took things like programming and uh, making things seriously. Before that I was always just messing around with it a little bit. I never really thought it was something that I could do with my life and, and here I am talking about it on the internet. So uh, yes, uh, this competition is running now. Uh, win yourself an Arduino Uno Mini. We're rounding up this week's show with a few interesting things I saw on the internet this week. Starting with the Katzen Tracker, which is an absolutely tiny little pet tracker. Um, now, we don't usually cover products on the show, but this isn't a product, at least not yet. This is a very interesting write-up as to how someone has come up with an absolutely tiny little pet tracker with a bunch of interesting properties. So this very full write-up on Hackster.io isn't actually from the creator, it's from Tom Fleet. Um, the creator does have a very thorough wiki, the wiki is in German, um, although as the wiki explains it's all viewable via uh, Google Translate. Um, but yes, essentially this is taking um, uh, the idea of a pet tracker and completely uh, designing it from the ground up to be something that is very small and very highly functional. Um, so this uses, as it mentions, the SAM R34, which is a, a little uh, ARM Cortex 32-bit chip, um, which is very similar to um, uh, uh, the SAM th uh, SAM D chips that are found in a lot of development boards. I can't remember the exact uh, uh, des designation of those ones. The difference with this one is it has a sub gigahertz band radio on it. So looking at the design just here, um, as you can see, this is just 30 millimeters wide. It truly is tiny. Um, and this is partly just down to a clever choice of components. Um, so uh, this uh, essentially combines uh, a, a LoRa tracker that uses the TTN network. Um, and uh, uh, if, uh, TTN is sort of interesting. It's something we'll come back to on, a, on a, another time. But essentially, there's a bunch of TTN gateways in uh, in more built up areas. Um, this project is based in Berlin, of course, a place I am not right now, but my home, um, uh, where there is a lot of TTN coverage. In fact, if you look on the Cats and Tracker Twitter page, you can see that uh, one of their pinned tweets is that there are 190 gateways um, uh, in the local area to where their cat Molly, who of course they are uh, making the project for, um, is based. So uh, yeah, they won't be getting lost anytime soon in Berlin at least. So fitting all the parts needed to make this work into a 30 millimeter wide coin is not an easy task because of course it needs power. It needs an MCU, the previously mentioned uh, SAM R34, um, and uh, it needs to also have uh, an antenna. In fact, there's an entire module for that. This is the tiny 11 millimeter squared Mbit part that you're seeing here. It truly is tiny. Um, but it, not only that, this has an accelerometer on it. Um, so uh, you can actually see, uh, where are we here? Down here, yes. You actually see there's a tiny little two millimeter by two millimeter by less than a millimeter sized module, which is designed uh, as an accelerometer, which is for a step counter. A step counter for cats is such a wonderful idea to see how fast and how far the cats are running. It's a great addition to any kind of uh, tracking device. Um, uh, and of course, as well, here is the GPS device. Again, an absolutely tiny device. If you look at it here, um, it is, yeah, it's just 10 millimeter squared, really diminutive parts on this. It's a wonderful idea. It's not an open source project. It is well documented, but it is something that they are planning on selling. Um, if you are interested, um, their Twitter is linked on this page. Also, there is the wiki for the project, which as I've previously mentioned is in German. You can of course translate it. Um, and if you are interested in getting a hold of one, um, there is a pre-ordering page as well. You can order one of these. Um, but uh, look, yeah, here is uh, here's the full thing together. You can see an actual image of it. Um, and uh, this is a two euro coin. If you're from the UK, that's slightly larger than a two pound coin. If you're from America, I'm not fully sure, to be honest. Um, but it is a very, very small thing indeed. So I'll leave a link to the Hacks.io write-up in the description of this video. And if you would like to find out more, you can, of course, scroll to the bottom of this page and head straight to the project itself. 
Up next, we have the very first video in a tutorial series by Made by Morton on YouTube, and this one is about transistors. Um, and I just thought it was a really good overview of everything you need to know about transistors in general. There's a lot of uh, beginner electronics courses out there, and I'm not trying to say that any one is better than the other, but what grabbed me about this one specifically is not only does it give a good description of what a transistor is and how it works, it also teaches you how you can read a data sheet about a transistor and has some practical um, uh, measurement uh, showing how it works uh, actually in the video. So for example, um, there's slides like this as he is talking about it, but also later on in the video um, there is actual practical examples of what is happening and uh, measuring the voltage across transistors and how they are working, talking about how NPN transistors work uh, against PNP transistors and things like that. So there's little more to say about this other than I found it compelling, very easy to understand, very well paced, and I hope that you will too. I will leave a link to Made by Morton's YouTube channel in the description of this video. Now, very quickly before we go on, I wanted to mention the Make It Smart contest. Uh, this is a contest that we are running with Nordic Semiconductor and Edge Impulse, and it begins today. Now, I'm going to go into a lot more detail on the show in the future, but for now, um, if you head to the Make It Smart with Nordic Thingy91 link in the description of this video, you will learn all you need to about the contest. To participate, you just need to pitch us an idea that you would use, uh, to, that you would make, sorry, with the Nordic Thingy91. It is a cellular IoT development kit that um, uh, comes with a SIM card, it comes with a built-in battery, a bunch of sensors, NFC capabilities, it's a fantastic little thing. In fact, um, I wrote an article on it a while ago, the Nordic Thingy91, and it has gone right up to the quite near the top of my favorite little uh, development boards to play with. As it happens, the one that I was playing with, I have now given away. I will be getting another one so that I can do a bit more on it in the future. Um, and when I do, we'll be coming back to it to talk about the Thingy91 and the contest. But for now, Head to the link in the description, you can find out how to participate. If your project is chosen, you will receive a free Thingy91. And as with all contests, there are prizes to be won. The winner wins $1,000 in cash, second place is $750, third is $500, and all of the runners-up who are published on the website get a $50 Amazon gift voucher. And as if that was not enough, the lovely people at Edge Impulse have given us an Oculus Quest 2 to give away as well. So, the Make It Start, Make It Start, the Make It Smart competition starts today. Head to the link in the description if you would like to enter and we will be coming back to this competition in future shows to uh, maybe go through a little bit more in detail what it is all about and maybe by that point I'll be holding a thingy 91 and showing you what I get up to it with it, uh, get up to with it as well Whoa, speaking is hard so that is the Electromaker Show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for all of the support you are showing this show on YouTube and by going to the Electromaker store, by joining the Discord, things like that. Uh, from a personal perspective, thank you to every one of you as well that sent uh, well-wishing uh, well messages uh, around the birth of our uh, son. Um, we are now a family of four. Uh, Elliot has a little brother in the form of Runo and uh, he is doing just fine, so are we all. Um, the Electromaker Show will continue uh, when I get back to Berlin. Um, it's always fun doing these shows on the hoof, but of course I'm looking forward to getting back into the attic of dreams and we will be talking about a lot more stuff in the future and um, there are a lot of great plans for the electromaker show and electromaker in general for this year and i'm really excited to share them all with you when the time is right but for now i hope you are having a happy healthy and creative week and i'll see you in the next one